Welcome to the Hoopsville Coaches Corner presented by Buffalo Wild Wings here at the third annual Hoopsville National Invitational Classic sponsored, or hosted I should say, by Stevenson University. I'm Dave McHugh, joined by Chicago head coach Mike McGrath. Hey Dave. How you doing? Good. Uh, welcome. I know you've been here a little while, yeah. but we haven't gotten you into the, into the basketball gym just yet. No, we haven't. Uh, I got a chance to come over and watch a game last night, but we came in Friday, or Thursday evening, uh, spent the day Friday down in D.C., gave our chance, kids a chance to see some of the, the stuff down there, and uh, now we're refocusing on basketball. Yeah. Um, we're obviously talking to you before your game against WPI, so a little bit different here. You don't have really any games to talk about, but uh, we'll talk about the trip in just a minute, but what's, what's your goal coming out of this event? You know, it'll be interesting. I think, you know, last year we had a solid team, and we were kind of knocking on the door mm -hmm. of making some noise and beat some good teams. You know, maybe lost a couple we should have won. Kind of roller coaster day. Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've played two games so far this year and beat teams that we should have. Mm -hmm. um, and, and played okay doing so. And I think this weekend is an opportunity for us as internally. Uh, quite candidly, I don't care what you and some of the media people think. But inter internally, just make a statement about what kind of team we sure. want to be this year. And playing the competition we will be here will allow us to do that. Yeah, you get two different teams. Um, you get a New England team in WPI in your first one. You get a Mid-Atlantic team at Stevenson. They play a different style, both of them. But, but everybody in Division Three tends to have their own style. Mm -hmm. it, it, are you disappointed if it's 0-2? Are, dis are you happy it's 2-0? and Or does it really make sure we're executing and doing what we need to do? Because it is your only games 3 and 4. Well, I'll answer your first two questions, and if we're 0-2, I am unhappy. Yeah. And if we're 2-0, I you're am happy. You're thrilled, yeah. <laughs> um, but you're right. There's a bigger picture to it. You know, it's, it's, the season is a journey. Um, interestingly enough, in Division Three, is especially for a league that doesn't have a conference mm -hmm. tournament, these early games can impact things. Uh, just as it doesn't, but you're on a you're on a journey. You're in a process to becoming the best team that you can be. Um, if we go two and zero, do we take as many steps as we could to be in the best team we could be? I don't know. Right. But we'll be happy. If yeah. we, if we lose two, we might take a lot of steps towards becoming the team we could be, and we'll be all right. But we'll be unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you've had committee experience, so just the fact you're playing a team from New England and a team from the Mid Atlantic who are going to have some criteria mm -hmm. advantages or, or even disadvantages, but really impact, I should say, is significant. You don't get that many opportunities to kind of tap into those areas. We do a little bit more than most because True. of the UAA. Right. Um, it's a little less unusual for our guys, but it's an isolated game here and there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just the game yesterday, I mean, Randolph Macon playing, mm -hmm. Mary Harden Baylor, I mean, for the South region and for the tournament selection, I mean, Getting crossover games like that is such an advantage for the national committee. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a small pool of data, but it's more data than it's, they usually have. I was going to so. say, it's just a little bit more yeah. than they normally yeah. get. Your guys traveling, I mean, nothing new. You guys mm -hmm. travel uh, every weekend in the UAA, uh, even the crazy travel of Atlanta to Rochester or vice versa. Um, so the travel out here, certainly nothing new for your guys, but you did throw that trip in uh, to go down to D.C. on yeah. Friday. Um, one of the things that I've found is a lot of teams take advantage of being in this area and make this an educational weekend. Well, you try college basketball at any level, and you can say Division three or whatever, but it should be an experience. Mm -hmm. And competition is a big part of that experience. Being a member of a team and being a teammate is a big part of that experience. And you know, just exposure to different people and different places is such a great advantage. And we have the unique opportunity, you know, with some of the people that are from. Have, been, have worked on our campus and from near our campus who work in D.C. to sure. have some access to some yeah. things. And, you know, we'd never have that opportunity again. And for us to say, okay, we got to keep them off their legs and watch film 12 hours a day, and, <laughs> you know, it might have helped, helped us compete, but we'll be all right. And giving them that opportunity was such a great chance. When you look at the UAA, uh, and, the, and obviously the travel is one factor, but you guys are used to it, as I mentioned. But when you look at this conference and how it's spread out and, and the diversity it has, what are some of its advantages? What are some of its disadvantages? Um, the greatest advantage I feel for it is playing similar institutions. Um, the nature of Division Three men's basketball and the nature of the diversity that there is there mm -hmm. And then the geographic limitations, you know, you can look at so, so many different schools. You know, we, I was just talking to Nathan yesterday about WNL. Mm -hmm. I mean, WNL plays in a league of regional schools from Virginia that are just so different from them. Oh, agreed, yeah. And, and whether it's a competitive advantage or disadvantage doesn't matter. It's really nice playing similar institutions. 
Obviously, the travel opportunities are great, yeah. and, and it's great competition. The thing that you see, because we are playing similar institutions, the relationships that our kids have over time that they develop with their opponents from other mm. schools. I had a former player who's an attorney in New York, and he plays on a men's league team on Saturday that's called the UA All-Stars. <laughs> it's a guy from NYU, and it's a guy from Case, and a guy from awesome. Henry. And that's with social great. media and so many other things, yeah. and, and what Hoopsville does and D3 Hoops does, the interaction is at such a different level, and now my guys are interacting with guys like them, which is a lot of fun. That That's certainly a nice t uh, twist, especially when it's grueling travel. And, and you bond with your women's team probably more than other schools would bond. Right. I mean, there's already a bond there because it's basketball, but you guys are literally traveling with them, stuck at airports sometimes. <laughs> we spent a lot of time with our women's team, and, I, and it's been terrific. Yeah. Um, the friends I've made that have been our women's coaches over the years has just been phenomenal. They're, they're just people I really respect and have really enjoyed. We work together, um, and it, which is what sports should be. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the unique things about this trip for us. I mean, we take a foreign trip every three years. We're going to Australia and New Zealand next this summer. This isn't considered foreign for you? No, not quite foreign. <laughs> but we're going to Australia and New Zealand next wow, summer. We'll spend, that's awesome. We'll spend two weeks. Our women's team goes on that. Oh, great. And us being, able, being on this trip on our, by ourselves <laughs> creates a little different dynamic. It feels a little weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you're supposed to have some other people. You're I don't know who to root for in the other games. <laughs> Uh, UAA is a conference. You guys have been picked to win it. Uh, you, had, you and I had talked uh, over the summer, and you had a suspicion that's what that the coaches would be thinking. Um, what, what do we make of this conference? It's, it's one of the top conferences in the country. No one will argue that. WashU has been the leader for a while. You guys have been coming up. Emory has reemerged. Um, sometimes we see something from NYU. Sometimes it's from Brandeis. What do we make of this conference? Well, right now, top to bottom, it's as balanced as it's ever been. Um, you know, I don't know that there's a clear-cut favorite, hmm. and I don't know that there's a clear-cut eighth-place team. And it could go, you know, any order in between. And every team is very good. I don't know that anybody's proven they're going to be great. Hmm. I'm sure nobody's proven that they're going to be bad. <laughs> um, it, it, the pick was, you know, I think the picks were made before we lost our all-conference point guard for the year. Um, that Details. might that might have changed things a little <laughs> bit, but I think we have a chance. I think a lot of teams in our league have a chance, and you know, and for example, last year, and this is one of the other advantages of the UA. I mean, you look at Emory, and they just kept getting better mm -hmm. and kept working and kept that process that I talked about. At the end of the year, they're in the Elite Eight. I wouldn't have gone into the last. The, beginning of last year thinking that was an Elite Eight team, especially compared to some of the teams they had the previous couple of years, yeah. where I thought they were better. Yes, um, agreed, agreed. So you just, there, but last year we knew Wash was pretty special. Yeah. I don't know that there's anybody we going into this year that we think is like that, but teams could end up doing that the way Emory did last year. And what's it like for Chicago? You guys have had, had a couple uh, rough seasons by your level. It's, uh, it's other teams would be like, I'd love to have their season. But rough uh, compared to your level, you guys are, are kind of back in it. I know you guys have a lot of pride with this program. It's got to feel good to be back in the conversation. Yeah, well, and that's part of what we want to do this weekend internally more than externally. Sure. Um, you know, rough seasons, we were solid, but you know, right. we, we weren't in the tournament. We weren't winning the, the UA championship, and those are things that we want to do. Right. You know, it's been five years since we've done that, and that's the longest stretch we've had since since Pat was there 23 years ago. And you know, we had good teams in there. We just didn't put it all together. And I think we got a group this year that's capable of doing that. And, we, you know, they're definitely eager to do that. We'll see uh, how we play today and how we play tomorrow, I think, show a lot about what type of catch sure. team it could be. Well, we're looking forward to having them play. By the time you're seeing this, they've already played WPI. Uh, but they will take on Stevenson 1 o'clock on Sunday before you guys fly back home to my hometown of Chicago. Um, he is Coach McGrath from Chicago. Again, they, they take on WPI and Stevenson this weekend. As you know, we always give the coach the final word. Any final thoughts you want to share with those watching? Um, we'll be happy if we're 2-0. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Don't ever confuse that. No, no, I got it. Perfect. Happy, 2-0 happy, 0-2 happy. Happy, happy. unhappy. Got it. 1-1? One one? We'll live. We'll talk about it. All we'll right. live with all of them. <laughs> but, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of splitting the difference. Very it's good. The, well, the soccer tie. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, thanks for coming. We certainly thanks, appreciate and it. And this has been, I should have said this in my final word, that this is such a unique opportunity that Stevenson and Hoops will help put together that, it's just fun. It's fun for Division Three basketball. It's fun for the people here. It's fun for the fans to see us play WPI and see Mary mm -hmm. Hunt Miller play Randolph Macon. And, and I know a lot of people out there watching this, although you've probably turned off this interview a while ago, <laughs> I uh, are, are enjoying the games. Yeah. 
Well, so, thanks. This is why we love having you guys here. Thanks. So thanks so much. Again, Coach Mike McGrath from Chicago here in the Hoopsville Coaches Corner, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings.